Good evening everyone. I am Dr. Om J. Lakhani. I am a consultant endocrinologist in Ahmedabad. And uh, this talk was given on 26th of September 2020 uh, at the SPEED uh, conference uh, in Delhi. And this is a recording of the same. Now this was a part of a debate where we were debating. Uh, we are over treating subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy and I was to talk against that topic, meaning that what I'm suggesting is that we are not over treating subclinical hypothyroidism, but we are correctly treating subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy. Uh, this presentation is made using an app called Predzi. So uh, if you'd really like to uh, you know, know how I made this presentation, I'm going to come out soon with a course on making great presentations, great medical presentations, and keep watching this space to know more about it. Okay, so let's begin. So, uh, you know, this is perhaps the, you know, uh, right question to ask, because, you know, recently, uh, and I'm pretty active on Twitter these days, and I came across this beautiful tweet by uh, Dr. Uh, Tim Koreva. Uh, Dr. Tim, if, as you know, uh, is one of the leading authorities uh, on this and he wrote a very beautiful tutorial. Tutorial is basically like a uh, you know a series of tweets which uh, discuss a small topic. So he asked this question to uh, audience and uh, on Twitter uh, should should we treat subclinical hypothyroidism during pregnancy and an overwhelming 48 percent uh, people said yes we should uh, whereas the other said uh, I you know only 23 percent said no Whereas 27% said it's well complicated, but yet they were, uh, you know, not against the idea. So, the you know the wrong this is actually the wrong question. Are we over treating? The right questions are these: Are we misdiagnosing subclinical hypothyroidism? Are we treating the right patients? That's the second question. And what do I do in my practice, or what what should you do in your practice when a patient comes to you? I think that's the most important item, right? So let's start with the first question. Are we misdiagnosing subclinical hypothyroidism? Now, what is interesting is that the cutoff of TSH of 2.5 in first trimester, 3 in the second and third trimester, this came from one small study done in about 5,000 patients done by the NIH many years back. And that somehow has stuck over a period of time. However, as more data emerged, we realized that in pregnancy, the upper limit of TSH may not be 2.5 uh, in the first trimester. In fact, uh, that is the reason why, if you see one of the strong recommendations given by uh, American Thyroid Association 2017 guidelines on this topic was that whenever possible, you should use a population-based trimester-specific reference range for TSH. So what we are doing is, by using a TSH of 2.5, 3.5, we are using the wrong cutoff. And since we are using the wrong cutoff, naturally we are over-diagnosing this condition. So if you use the right cutoff, you will make the right diagnosis. So you would ask me, what is the reference range in Indian patients? Now, since this talk was given in Delhi, uh, I took a reference range from uh, uh, close to Delhi, that is from Haryana, that is a study done by Rajput et al. Uh, this is the data, this is the study which was published in Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. And you can see the TSH value in the first trimester, the 97.5 percentile is 3.69 so the upper limit uh, that is the 97.5 fifth uh, centile uh, is should should be uh, considered to be 3.69 if you look at second trimester the value is 4.47 and in the third trimester it's 4.6 so clearly this is above the reference range which we often use in clinical practice having said that the guidelines are suggested that if you don't have a population specific reference range you should perhaps use a reference range of four so the magic number is four that is to be used in the first trimester. So just to revise, uh, the upper limit that is 97.5 centile in first trimester is 3.69, in second 4.47 and third is 4.38. So you can remember this point uh, and, and you can perhaps take a screenshot of this uh, to keep it safely. Okay, so then if you look at the meta-analysis of, you know, now the, the, let's come to the core question, whether subclinical hypothyroidism treating does it have any impact does it have any any real outcome uh, if you see a meta-analysis done this is by Maraka et al 
uh, you can see that subclinical hypothyroidism was associated with increased pregnancy loss. That is, uh, you know, it was statistically significant, the uh, odds ratio being 2. Uh, increased risk of placental abruption, uh, increased risk of premature rupture of membranes and uh, very importantly increased risk of neonatal death in these uh, patients. So basically subclinical hypothyroidism does have clinical correlation with uh, you know uh, bad obstructive, out obstructive outcomes as you can see from this uh, study which was a meta-analysis. Uh, the question however is subclinical hypothyroidism definitely has a risk but the question is does the treatment reduce the risk and this is again an important question. So I know that there is a risk but is this is a subclinical hypothyroidism just a marker of the risk and by giving levothyroxine am I mitigating the risk that's the important question to be asked. So let's look at that question in more detail uh, here. Okay so next let's look at are we treating the right patient and this is the important question. So the question is whom do you really treat? So one thing we really saw that we need to adjust the reference range based on our population and sort of a uh, outlier you would say that you know what kind of references you should use in your population i would say if you don't have a population specific range you should use a value of four okay now whom to treat so let's say uh, let's divide this in a very simple way you need to divide it into patients who are nttp or positive versus nttp or negative this is extremely important as i'll allude to that in a few minutes uh, nttpo must be done in all these patients because you know you would get a different kind of outcome in, in T, uh, TPO positive versus NTTPO negative patients. So let's look at the first uh, cohort that is NTTPO negative group of patients. Now let's divide it into three groups. One is those who are having TSH more than 10 and I think uh, everybody including my opponent uh, would agree to this that TSH more than 10 would actually uh, suggest an overt hypothyroidism in these women and then hence you know I think there is no doubt about it that TSH more than 10 must be treated in all of these patients. Uh, all of these women should be treated with levothyroxine. The other end is the green area that is the uh, below the upper limit of reference range that is a value uh, less than 4. Uh, again I would say let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Uh, less than 2.5 as you can su suggest and I think all of us would again agree in an NTTP or negative women with TSH less than 2.5 would constitute something normal and there is no point of treating it. Uh, what about 2.5 to 4? Now there is evidence of uh, there is some evidence of benefit here uh, but evidence is generally weak and, and uh, this however remember if you see the current definition of subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy this actually does not fit into subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy again so I would say that by the new definition we are treating this this patient treating this especially if they are NTTP or negative is something we should avoid doing. Uh, let's look at the range which in question right that is range of 4 to 10 and that is the real subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy. So if you look at this range I have a beautiful study uh, this is a very well conducted study though I would say this this is a study from Iran and a lot of people see this negatively but this is actually a study published in New England Journal of uh, sorry in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism the premier journal journal in, in endocrinology and hence this, this study is and it's a very beautifully conducted study very well conducted study I think you know I'm a big fan of this this well conducted study the questions they've asked is the effects of levothyroxine so they have now asked whether treatment is really benefit beneficial uh, in women who are subclinically hypothyroid and negative for thyroid peroxidase and lipolysis so this is a very specific question it's a randomized control trial RCT done from Iran okay so let's look at the results of this trial this is let this is the study design so they took women who are NTTP or negative and they divided into those who are euthyroid that is the TSH was absolutely normal uh, they actually took 2.5 here but I, I, I'll you know come to that point in a minute and those who are uh, TPO uh, subclinical hypothyroid uh, they of course divided into no intervention versus levothyroxine what were the results of this study they clearly found what they interestingly found was that there is significance but the significance only came up when the TSH was more than 4 so in women you can see uh, in women with TSH more than 4 there was beneficial and there was reduction in preterm delivery when these women were treated with levothyroxine. So clearly you can see again from this chart you know uh, in, in TSH less than 4 and TSH uh, you know uh, 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 greater than 4 these are A is the group where the women were treated uh, and B is the group where these women were not treated. You can see this group here uh, the, the TSH more than 4 group you can see uh, you know there is a clear difference is 7% of preterm delivery here and 19% over here 
and these were the control groups which is this 5.6 percent so you can clearly see the evident difference in this study so in this group as this study clearly demonstrate that by giving levothyroxine to this women you are actually reducing or mitigating the risk of preterm delivery this is the only one parameter they looked at uh, they could have seen other parameters but this they narrowed down to one parameter that is preterm delivery and they found that there was a clear clear benefit uh, over there in terms of studies but again they found the benefit at tsh more than four and not more than 2.5 okay what about tpo positive women so in tpo positive women uh, we'll divide it into four groups so we'll say tsh more than 10 again i'm sure this is the group where where it, it suggests an overt hypothyroidism and these women must be clearly treated uh, tsh less than 2.5 again uh, you know it's technically a gray area uh, so i put it as green but uh, this is a study which was known as the tablet trial uh, which recently which was uh, published in the new england journal of medicine which clearly showed that in this group of patient youth thyroid ntp or positive women there was actually no benefit no benefit in treatment so basically this study this new rct has clearly answered this question and i think you know no need to reinvent the wheel i think this, this is a good well conducted study uh, in a good journal i think you know we should take the uh, data from that okay then comes the gray area 2.5 to 4 and 4 to 10 okay so let's look at the 4 to 10 group first uh, this is the tsh value of 4 to 10 with tpo positive right again this is an area which we are debating today uh, again a same study by the same group and hence i think this is a beautiful part uh, this is pu published in clinical endocrinology again one of the leading journals uh, they asked this question effect of levothyroxine treatment in pregnancy outcomes in women with autoimmune thyroid disease that is in ttpo positive women and uh, again very well conducted study and in this they found this is the results group a was the group which was uh, basically treated uh, versus uh, the group b where it was the treatment was not given and you can see uh, the risk of preterm delivery and neonatal admissions and you can see the preterm delivery risk is is uh, here uh, at about seven percent and it's 23 percent in the women who were not treated okay so the study revealed that administration of levothyroxine in tpo antibody positive women with no overt hypothyroidism uh, or thyroid dysfunction led to 70 to 80 percent decrease in preterm delivery and we found that by treating 5.9 tpo positive women with levothyroxine one preterm delivery could be prevented so you can see the number needed to treat however the treatment uh, benefit was mainly observed in women with tsh more than four right so this is again uh, very important so again looking at this result uh, very well conducted rct you can clearly say that this group there is benefit of treatment what about the group which is tsh of 2.5 to 4 okay so the tsh of 2.5 to 4 with nttpo positive now this is an interesting subset now this is a, a done study done by koreva uh, whose, whose tweet i really initially showed you what they found was that when you have tpo positive per se there was slightly increased risk of miscarriage but when you had elevated tsh with uh, tpo positive the risk Magnif uh, it's kind of magnified right so if you look at tsh of 2.5 to 10 the risk is 1.62 though of course you can see uh, it crosses the line you can say uh, but as the tsh values keeps increasing the the significance of the risk of miscarriage keeps increasing so tsh of 5.2 to 10 you know it is about 3 and so on and so forth you can see the risk of miscarriage clearly increases with the increasing of tsh with nttpo positive status okay so nttpo positivity and tsh more than 2.5 the risk you can see here is 1.36 odds ratio and you can see here uh, with more than 4 it is clearly more the risk is clearly more so if you see the 2017 guidelines ata says that the orthoxin therapy may be considered so they're saying that in tpo positive women with tsh more than 2.5 and below the upper limit of pregnancy specific reference range uh, you know uh, you can consider treating this patient there is weak recommendation with moderate quality of evidence but i think in this group of patients uh, you would have to use a clinical judgment and you will have to use your own sort of judgment uh, in, in considering whether to treat or not to treat okay so looking at uh, summarizing the uh, you know uh, data and to tell you what i do in my practice and what you should do in your practice uh, you first take the women who are tsh 2.5 to 10 divided into nttpo positive versus nttpo negative right uh, more than 10 you'll definitely treat less than 2.5 you will definitely not treat now tpo negative women 2.5 to 4 tsh you should not be treating this women as you can see uh, and, and tsh more than 4 
you should consider treating. If you see Nazarpur's data, you should treat, treat this women clearly. Uh, again, if you see TPO positive, this is again where you have consideration for treatment. Uh, if it's 2.5 to 4, but when it's more than 4, uh, you should consider definitely treating this. Okay, so this this still remains a grey area for me, but I think you know for, if it's more than 4, you should consider treating. So I thank you for your patient listening, and I hope this uh, presentation was useful for your clinical.